Hello. Welcome to today's presentation. Today we will be talking about the glomerular filtration or also called as GFR. At the end of this particular presentation, you should be able to describe the filtration membrane, discuss the pressures that promote and oppose glomerular filtration. So these are the goals that will be achieved. Before we go on to the glomerular filtration, let us look at some of the renal functions. General functions, excretion, regulation of the internal environment, that is the water balance, sodium and potassium balance, as well as the acid-base balance, which helps in maintaining the normal pH of blood. Apart from this, it also helps in the production of renin, erythropoietin and vitamin D. This is a typical section cut from above downwards of the kidney, the frontal section of the right kidney. This shows that we have the renal cortex on the outside and then the renal medulla on the inside. There are renal columns, renal pyramid in the renal medulla, renal sinus, renal papilla and also then we have the outer capsule which is called as the renal capsule. We can see that the path for urine drainage is uh, you see that the nephrons which are about roughly around 1.2 million per kidney these nephrons uh, filter the blood plasma and this filtrate is altered to form the urine the path of the urine drainage begins in the collecting duct goes through the papillary duct in the renal pyramid towards the minor calyx then the major calyx and enters into the renal pelvis from there into the ureter and then enters into the urinary bladder till it is evacuated or voided. Renal structure and function made up of cortical nephrons roughly around 85 percent then we also have what are called as the juxta medullary nephrons which are about 15 percent they help in concentrating the urine the nephron has a renal corpuscle and this renal corpuscle is made up of the Bowman's capsule and the glomerular capillaries and the function of this is for filtration This is a typical nephron, what you can see. You can see the Bowman's capsule, the glomerulus, followed by the proximal tubule or the proximal convoluted tubule. And then it is twisted, it is convoluted and enters from the cortex towards the medulla. It becomes the descending limb of the loop of Henle and then the ascending limb of the loop of Henle followed by the distal convoluted tubule and then leading into what is called as the collecting duct and then into the urinary bladder and later into the urinary bladder through the ureter. The glomerulus is made up of the capillaries and this is called as a glomerular capillary network. This is to summarize the nephron made up of the renal corpuscle, renal tubule and the collecting duct or the collecting tubule. 
Renal corpuscle is made up of Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. Whereas the renal tubule is made up of the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule. All this will empty into the collecting duct or the tubule. From there to the, the urine is passed into the ureter and then into the bladder. Glomerular filtration rate. Let us look at these step by step. First is definition of glomerular filtration rate. Followed by this, we have a function of the filtration membrane. Then, what is the composition of the glomerular filtrate? And then, what are the forces that determine the glomerular filtration rate or the GFR? Glomerular filtration rate definition. It is the total amount of filtrate that is formed by all the nephrons of the kidney in one minute and it is called as the glomerular filtration rate. Normal average is around 125 milliliters per minute or 7.5 liters per minute or if you take the whole day it's about 180 liters per minute. In other words, 180 liters of plasma is filtered in the glomerulus. The kidney nephrons could be compared to a coffee filter. As you can see here, the coffee filter paper, the filter paper acts as a membrane and the hot water filters by a force called as gravity. Therefore, the container will have coffee while the coarse powder remains on the filter paper. This is almost the same principle with which the nephrons in the kidneys work, but the forces are different. It is not by gravity. This is to show a typical picture of the filtration membrane. If you look at the filtration membrane, it is made up of three different layers. Number one, the glomerular endothelial, capillary endothelial cell layer. Secondly, it is the glomerular basement membrane. And lastly, the foot processes or pedicels of the podocytes. All this makes up the membrane. This is one of the nature's best membranes that we know of. It is very special. Next, let us look at the renal blood flow because ultimately the urine that is formed is coming from the blood itself. The cardiac output is around 5 liters per minute. In other words, 20% of the cardiac output will become the renal blood flow. That is about 1 liter per minute. Of this, the renal plasma flow will be approximately 600 milliliters per minute. That is 20% of filters, that is around 120 to 125 milliliters per minute. Metabolic waste that is produced per day when the diet is normal is and uh, normal activity is there we find about 600 milliosmoles of solute being produced that needs to be excreted let us look at the composition of the glomerular filtrate this glomerular filtrate has an osmolarity of 290 milliosmoles per liter. It is the same as that of plasma. If it is difficult to remember 290, we can approximately we can say it is around 300 milliosmoles per liter. 
but if you want to be exact it is around 290 milliohms mass per liter and this filtrate is made up of water major component then we have the ions and what are the ions that are present in this the similar ionic composition as that of plasma that is sodium potassium bicarbonate and chloride along with this we also have nitrogenous waste products like urea uric acid and creatinine other than this we have the organic molecules that is glucose and amino acids and not to forget the vitamins too this slide explains what are the different forces and what are the pressures in millimeters of mercury there are forces that favor the filtration and there are forces that oppose the filtration and the difference between these two is called as the net filtration pressure now let us look at the favoring fil uh, for a uh, filtration force this is called as the capillary hydrostatic pressure or in other words it is the blood pressure at the level of the capillaries in the bowman's capsule it is around 55 millimeters of mercury the opposing forces that oppose the filtration are the hydrostatic pressure in the bowman's capsule of the fluid that is already in the bowman's capsule then the capillary oncotic pressure or also called as a colloid osmotic pressure which is exerted by the plasma proteins and it does tries to hold the fluid back and this is called as the capillary oncotic pressure which is around 30 mm of mercury whereas the hydrostatic pressure is 15 mm of mercury so in other words the opposing filtration forces adds up to 45 mm of mercury whereas the capillary hydrostatic pressure which is the favoring force is around 55 mm of mercury in other words the net filtration pressure or nfp which is 1 minus the 2 is around plus 10 mm of mercury and therefore it favors filtration let us look at each of these forces glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure or gbhp is the blood pressure in the glomerular capillaries generally it is around 55 mm of mercury it promotes filtration by forcing water and solutes in the blood plasma through the filtration membrane next the force that we need to reckon with is the capsular hydrostatic pressure or the chp and it is the pressure that is exerted against the filtration membrane by fluid already in the capsular space and the renal tubule this opposes filtration and it represents the back pressure of about 15 mm of mercury the next force that we need to understand is called as the blood colloidal osmotic pressure or the bcop which is due to the presence of proteins such as albumin globulins and fibrinogen in the blood plasma these also oppose the filtration and the average is of this uh, colloid osmotic pressure is in the capillaries is around 30 mm of mercury this slide explains the favoring forces and the opposing forces you have to understand that the blood flows from the afferent arterial into the blood capillaries and back into the efferent arterial and then continues further the favoring forces is 55 mm of mercury 
whereas the opposing forces totaling up to 45 millimeters of mercury and the net filtration pressure therefore equals 10 millimeters of mercury. Next, we will take a look at the glomerular flow rate. If you look at this particular slide, you will find that around 80% of the blood that is flowing towards the glomerulus is going back into the circulation, whereas only 20% of it is getting filtered. And of this, you will be surprised to know that 19% of the fluid is going to be reabsorbed and less than 1% is going to be excreted into the external environment as the urine. Also another important thing we have to remember is the afferent arteriole is larger in diameter compared to the efferent arteriole which is smaller in diameter. The filtration fraction is GFR divided by the renal plasma flow and normally is around 0.2 or 20 percent of the renal plasma flow. Next let us look at the regulation of GFR. Regulation of GFR it is brought about by autoregulation. This is one of the regions other than the brain blood flow where the autoregulation takes place. This is due to the myogenic stretch, tubular glomerular feedback, macular denser cells and the juxtaglomerular cells which produce certain chemicals which help in the uh, regulation of this uh, glomerular filtration rate. Apart from that we have the autonomic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system uh, which whose neurotransmitter is norepinephrine it acts on their respective receptors and produces arterial lung and vasoconstriction apart from this we also have hormones or paracrine secretions like angiotensin 2 and prostaglandins which help in the regulation of gfr This slide shows the comparison of the mean arterial blood pressure and the glomerular filtration rate. So on the x-axis we have the mean arterial blood pressure, on the y-axis we have the glomerular filtration rate that is liters per day and we will notice that uh, within a certain range the autoregulation is maintained. This is called as a zone of autoregulation between 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury. Only when the blood pressure goes beyond that, then the autoregulation fails. Or it goes below 40 millimeters of mercury, then it will fail. Otherwise, when the kidney is going to shut down. Now let us look at the factors affecting the glomerular filtration rate. Number one, changes in the renal blood flow. Depending on the blood flow, the amount of filtration is going to alter. Number two, changes in glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. Changes in the systemic blood pressure and afferent and efferent arteriolar constriction which one is going to constrict will alter uh, the GFR. Changes in the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule also will affect the GFR. Ureteral obstruction and edema of kidney inside a tight renal capsule. All these factors affect or alter the GFR. Furthermore, you should also remember that changes in the concentration of the plasma proteins which is exerting the colloid osmotic pressure 
that also affects the filtration. For example, dehydration, hypoproteinemia, all these are going to affect the filtration rate. Also, changes in the glomerular capillary permeability and effective filtration surface area. If it gets thickened, then it is going to alter the GFR or the glomerular filtration rate. In summary, what it is, is structural and functional unit of the kidney is called as a nephron. In roughly around 1.2 million uh, nephrons are there per kidney. The renal blood flow is of 20% of the cardiac output. The renal plasma flow is around 600 milliliters per minute. The glomerulus is made up of the glomerular capillaries and the Bowman's capsule. Together, it is called as the glomerulus. Basic process is filtration. That is the first step. And that leads This slide is explaining the different substances that are going to be filtered, how much is going to be filtered, how much of it is going to be excreted, and how much is going to be reabsorbed. Let us look at it individually. First, water. About 180 liters is going to be filtered per day. And the amount that is going to be excreted is on an average 1.8 liters. So 99% of it is going to be reabsorbed. Let us look at sodium, the electrolyte. 630 grams per day and only 3.2 grams per day is excreted. So 99.5% of it is going to be reabsorbed. Let's look at the next substance that is glucose. 180 liters grams is going to be filtered per day but we do not find normally the glucose to be appearing in the urine so therefore 100% reabsorption. It's only in the situation called as diabetes mellitus that you find some of the sugar starts appearing into the urine and it can go high. Next let us look at urea. Urea around 54 grams per day is going to be filtered whereas 30 of grams is going to be reabsorbed uh, 30 grams is going to be excreted and therefore roughly around 44 percent is going to be reabsorbed so please ask yourself how I can take what I learn today to make my life different tomorrow. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for watching this presentation and we would appreciate your feedback on this material. Thanks.